Pete Williams speaking of horses. We are here in Jasper, Georgia. We are in North Georgia, up in the hills, not too far south of the uh, Tennessee, North Carolina line. It's a beautiful area. This is the home of trainer Carl Bledsoe. Carl has just gate. And we are proud to be here and be working with Carl again as we're going to bring you some data here on Speaking of Horses about Carl and another clinic that he's doing. There's some more information he's going to divulge on his Just Gate process. You can also watch Carl on Farm and Ranch TV. He has his own show called Carl Bledsoe Just Gate. That's on Farm and Ranch. But right now, we're here at Speaking of Horses. We're going to show you some of the data that Carl is going to present. So, here on Speaking of Horses today, we feature Mr. Carl Bledsoe. Let's watch. <laughs> They are our family, and we only want the best for them. No standing water means clean, good tasting, algae free, mosquito free, and virus free water. No risk of electric shock, no risk of fire from faulty wiring. Cool water in the summer, warm water in the winter. Water delivered fresh from the water supply at 50 degrees year round. Drinking post water. Good morning. My name is Carl Bledsoe. I'm from Talking Rock, Georgia, a little town about 90 miles north of Atlanta, and I train gated horses. I'm coming to you today to share with you some of the experience that I have in, in my approach to, to easy gates with your gated breeds. I mainly work with your Tennessee walking horses, your Missouri fox trotters, and your mountain horses. I do have some experience with some of the other gated breeds, but in my particular part of the country, that's most of what we run into. Uh, today, I'm riding a six-year-old Tennessee walking horse. We're gonna be talking about body control today and how body control relates to easy gates. Uh, since we're doing body control today, I'm riding with a snaffle bit, uh, just, just a plain, it's a three-piece snaffle bit with a, with a roller in the middle. It's a tongue relief bit. Anytime I'm working on any kind of movement with the horse, I don't put a curb bit, I stay with the snaffle bit. It's the easiest to train the horse, and the horse doesn't have to pay the price if I make a mistake with this bit. Uh, in, in our journey through our horsemanship, we all make mistakes, so I would encourage you to always look at the, 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 the mouth of the horse and to put something that he's comfortable, that he can learn with. Uh, moving on, talking about our, our easy gates with the horse, I'm looking for this horse to make four independent steps, but I'm looking for him to, to respond to my seed and my aids as I move forward. I want to be able to influence, I want to influence his head, his shoulders, his barrel, and his hindquarters. Before I can get out of a walk or a working walk into some of the gates, the signature gates for the horses, I work towards a working walk and a flat walk. And the quickest way to get to the signature gates of the horse is to take your time and teach the horse through a, through a progression of balance and understanding. So I'm going to move out just a little bit here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get my horse to walk forward. Walking forward, I want to be able to, my body to sit the size of the circle that I'm riding here. I want to see the corner of the inside eye. I want the horse moving forward on the outside rein. That's where the constant steady flow of energy is and it enables me to keep the horse's barrel where I need it, and it enables me to keep the horse on the track that I need. So as when he's walking freely, we're going to the right now. I'm going to move toward the camera, and I'm going to move him into the right rein. Just moved his shoulder over. Now he's going forward on the right rein. Got a little close to the camera. I'm looking for the corner of the left eye here. I want the horse's top line 
I want his front feet to go where my fingers and my chest are pointing. And I'm, I'm giving you the fingers and the chest as a guide. I want the horse walking through his body. I don't want to have to keep pulling this inside rein. So I'm going to move toward the camera, move him into the left rein, move forward. And all I'm doing right now is getting this horse to walk through his body. Get some relaxation and some suppling. Being able to influence these horses' body is, is the key with the gates to get your correct gates. If you're just riding a horse along and you're bridle riding him and you can't influence the body, you can't get the horse to give you a, a leg yield and move over. If you can't get the horse to move his shoulders around lightly without walking forward, all of this stuff plays a part in the balance of the animal and his strength to where he can carry you down the trail. So I just did two moves. The first one was a leg yield. That's the move I do mostly when I'm teaching these horses to gait. If we're walking along on a straight line and he falls on the forehand and he wants to pace, I leg yield him away and interrupt his footfall to make him square his gait up. In other words, to get to four independent steps rather than being on the forehand pulling me along. That's the main movement I do, but there's also a movement of shoulder in, and that's where I hold the horse with my leg and just ask his shoulders to go away. This is where your horse learns to supple and use his body all the way through his body, and he learns relaxation. So I've done a couple of moves, so now I'm just going to let him walk out and relax. When I give with the reins, I want the horse to lower his head. Give me some relaxation. I'm going to bring the shoulder around. Stop. Now I'm going to ask him to back with my seat. But what I'm looking for here is for the horse to respond to the aids to my seat without much direction from the bit because later on, just like he's doing right now, I'm going to want him to reach into the bit and make contact to where we can add speed and a little impulsion to our forward and get to the easy gates. But right now we're still just balancing. I'm just trying to get this animal to walk in a circle, the size circle that my aids are riding trying to get him to walk through his body. I'm going to walk him out a little faster here. If you'll notice, every time he steps forward with his hindquarters, he shakes his head a little bit. All of your gated breeds are supposed to shake their head to some degree. Even your racking horses, until they get to their signature gates, they're bred to shake their head. So if you notice, this horse's head is about level with, with his withers, and that's the, the level that I want this horse to carry himself for this particular type of training. And I'm just moving the horse out here, working on suppling his body, and in just a few minutes, I'm gonna step him up just to give you guys a, a preview of the next, the next level of day. Hey, we're here in North Georgia. We'll be back with a lot more right after these words. So stay with us right here on Speaking of Horses. The rural American lifestyle, it's how we work, and it's how we play. It's how we learn, and how we enjoy the finer things in life. How we take care of our animals, and tend to the land, it's a way of life. Has been for hundreds of years. Now there's a whole new way for rural America to watch TV. Equa Aid, the first and last aid for wound skin disorders, proud flesh eliminator, all guaranteed. Safe and effective water based, naturally antibacterial. You'll want it in your tack box, in your trailer, on the trail with you, or any event. That is Equa Aid. Check them out, equaaid.com. Equa Essentials Horse Care Products, a complete 
horse care package of all grooming skin care body care products all from Equisentials. Developed by Dr. Tom Tweeten, these products are all tested and checked to make sure they're safe on your animals, horses, and in some cases, dogs and the like. But you need to have Equisentials as a part of your tack box and routine. That's Equisentials Horse Care Products. Welcome to the world of Orange Slow Feeder, the longest lasting, highest quality slow feed net in the world. We currently have 12 different sizes, and we have anywhere from a small trailer net Clear up to a 6x6 round bale or a 448 square bale net. And you can contact us at orangesolopeter.com. We also have a Facebook page and we're at Pinterest and we'll, we'll be on Twitter soon. There you have a good flat wall. Now guys, don't mistake what I'm doing here for your show ring type horse. I mainly work trail horses. That's what this horse is. If we were to go to a, to a local show, he would show in a, in a pleasure class, like a country pleasure class, or, or a class for the working type horse. This is not a show horse. I'm not looking for his head to be up here and crank down on his back end. I want, a, I want a good round top line with impulsion from behind, but I want this horse to have a good expression like we're going to town and he's looking forward to going to town and he's carrying me. So in this video, you've seen me move the horse forward in a circle, asking for right and left shape. You've, you've seen him walk through his body. Uh, I've asked the horse to yield his rib cage. I've asked the horse to move his shoulders. I'm going to ask him to move his hindquarters over now. And ideally, you just got to keep asking and asking and asking. Cool. So once you can get all this communication with your animal and they understand that each one of these aids means a specific thing and you can put the puzzles together, then you're ready to go ride uh, either down the trail. I have some, some people that take lessons with me uh, that, that go to the local dressage shows and they take dressage tests. This horse is ready to put in a frame and, and actually do a, a dressage test where we transition from, uh, from different speeds and different carriages of the head in different size circles and the horse has to understand the aids to be able to do those particular moves. And he's at the point now that he's ready to do that. And what I mean by a frame is, uh, this horse is ready to, to uh, collect his whole body up with a little more forward and carry his body in a posture that matches the move that you're asking him to do according to the dressage test and the level of the test that we're doing. So I've spent the last year teaching this horse all these moves. He understands completely what my body's asking him to do, the level that I'm asking him to do it with, with the amount of energy it takes and and now we're ready to put several of the pieces together and and actually ask the horse to do a test so i'm going to ride a, a, a small circle here and explain to you what i mean about a frame this is this is about a not quite a 10 meter circle but the horse's body has to match the circle that we're riding, he has to walk all the way through his body. He has to have a certain amount of energy in his feet that has to stay consistent. But not only does the horse's top line have to be round this way, but it has to match the arc of the circle as well. And that's what I mean with a frame. When I'm sitting to the right here, he has to be bent around this leg. When I'm sitting to the left here, Let's see if I move him over here. He has to be bent around the right leg. And this horse is ready to put in that frame. And, and what happens when you put him in this frame after we've got all these pieces in place, you're able to train the horse to have more strength and more carriage through his body. That's why all of these things are so important because the idea is strengthening the horse to where he has body awareness 
to where you can get to the easy gates that your horse is supposed to do without a lot of attachments. I, you know, I, I follow the internet a whole lot and the friends with lots of different sites and there's lots of controversy on these gated horses out there. Do I have to have a specific type shoe? Do I have to have a specific type bit? Uh, what does it take to, to make the horse gate? The gate is natural, guys. It's their fingerprint. They are bred to do this, this four-beat gate. You don't have to have special tools to do it for the trail horse and the dressage type horse to get them to carry themselves in the posture that it takes to be correct. Now, if you want to go to the horse show and you want to animate the gate and get a big flamboyant move, uh, maybe you, you would need some of the different shoeing and stuff like that, but that's out of the realm of what we do here. Uh, we, we train horses here for trail, uh, for pleasure, uh, for, for local, local type shows, fun day, fun day type shows, and for, you know, people that want to test in the, in the Western Dressage arena. So, so to get your horse correct, you don't need all those devices. I just, I, I rode this horse at an extended gate a minute ago, and we'll ride him again. And that's perfect for what we're doing with the trail. The horse is in perfect carriage to go down the trail. He's got his head up, he's looking where he's going. He's separating his feet, he's shaking his head correctly. He's moving his barrel from side to side, which is really good, and really healthy for the horse. So I can't, I can't say enough about this type of training for the horse. Uh, a lot of you guys may or may not know, I do come from the show world and, and I understand the pitfalls that people get into when they, when they are trying to train these horses and it seems like, oh my gosh, he's just not getting where I want to go with him. Uh, and, and you buy into that, uh, you know, you got to have a special shoe or you got to have a special shoe, you got to have a special bit. Once you start that, you move from one gimmick to the next, to the next, to the next. And if you just take the time that it takes to do it correct, if, if you give the horse the time to, to, for his body to, to be aware of what you do, it's kind of like a high school athlete. Uh, you know, the local basketball team here's got a real good uh, freshman that's real tall and, and very athletic, but his body and his athleticism have not caught up with each other yet. And it's the same thing with these horses. You know, we, we, we domesticated them and put them in stalls and then we expect, oh, well, I wanna go for a trail ride and the horse has gotta do this. And we just expect for the horse to understand what we want him to do without any type of training and understanding to where he, he possesses the tools that it takes to understand what you want him to do. So, uh, understanding these horses bodies and getting body control and being able to communicate to the feed i'm gonna ride just a little bit more i've got just a minute or two left here i'm gonna ride a little bit more and make you guys understand uh i'm not using this bit to control the horse i'm using this bit kind of like my computer keyboard i want to talk to the computer so if i want the horse to stop i raise my hands and sit, the horse stops. If I want the horse to back up, I push back with my seat, squeeze the reins, and I ride him backwards with my legs, okay? I'm not pulling the reins, but he understands by the placement of the bit and the placement of my seat that he needs to go back. I'm gonna walk out here in front of the camera again and do a shoulder move, one more shoulder move to make you guys understand just exactly what I've said, okay? I'm sitting here on this horse and I want him to go that direction with his shoulders. That's an that's a outside rein move. So I'm gonna open this door and move his shoulder with the outside rein. But if you'll notice, my outside leg's on him too. He's crossing his front feet correctly. He's balanced on his back end and he has enough strength to pick me up and do that. This didn't happen by accident. This has been a progression of training we started out just moving forward and the horse learning how to respond to my seat and my aids uh, by moving forward and walking through his body. I didn't try to make this horse get to any special type of gate uh, right off to do that. All I wanted him to do was walk and learn how to walk relaxed and how to walk supple. And what I mean supple is 
if I pick up the rein and ask his body to do something, will he do it? Right now, I just asked him to move his hind end to my left. He did. Did he give me enough expression with it? Probably not. Uh, I, I might have wanted a quicker reaction, so I need to work at that. But helping you guys understand to get to where you want to with your gated horses, this horse has to be aware of every part of his body and how you are trying to influence it through your aids and through your communication. So, so you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on and so many people come to me that, that say that they, their horses won't gate and they're riding the horse too fast and they're pulling back on the reins and the horse doesn't have a clue what's going on. They've not spent the time to, to make the horse understand that if you lay this rein on the neck and put your leg on, you want him to move his shoulder over, okay? Or if you bring this same rein behind the front of the saddle and move your leg back, you want him to move his hind end over. Or if you open this door up here and keep your leg at the center position and ask him to move over, that's what he's supposed to do. So until you can teach the horse the different positions of your leg, the different positions of your seat, it's not going to make any sense to him. And everything you do is white noise. So understanding that to get to this good flat walk, you've got to go through this progression that I've gone through. Come on, Jazz. This is what I'm looking for, guys. You go through the progression of training. This is the gait you can have. This didn't happen just by accident. I've got hours and hours and hours of riding this horse to get him to where I can step him off and him separate his feet that way and shake his head and be proud of what he's doing. It was very easy for him to do that, but it's been work, it's been it's been understanding, and it's been training and teaching that's gotten this hey, horse. We're to here this in point. North Georgia. We'll be back with a lot more right after these words so stay with us right here on speaking of horses timeless fence systems they're non-conductive they're self-insulating they're maintenance free beyond that they're very easy to install they'll last for years and years timeless fence systems and we want to give a great big thank you to adeptus animal nutrition based on science designed to help your horses and other pets and animals. Adeptus, now a part of the Piranha family. I hope today's session uh, has given you guys a, just, a, just a small clue of what we need to go through to train these horses. If you have any questions for me, you can reach me at Just Gate on Facebook. Uh, Carl Bledsoe Horsemanship is my website. Uh, or Carl Bledsoe on Facebook. All of my contact information is on all of that stuff. I'd be glad to, to share what I do with you guys and, and help you understand. I love what I do. Uh, uh, I get to do this every day of my life and I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the entire world because I do get to do this every day of my life. And I just love to share what I do with you folks. I've enjoyed spending my time with you and you folks have a great day.